Human urine is considered gross, right? What if I told you that this waste has the potential to change the world if we think differently about it and if we innovate? The modern toilet is based on the assumption that we can waste water. We use between 30 to 40% of our daily water usage just to flush our toilets. Consider this. Phones have changed significantly over the past century or so. And even rural communities will have a cell phone. But our toilets haven't changed since Victorian times. So why have we not innovated the toilet further? Prof. Juma describes it best. People resist innovation because they fear a loss of some kind. From resistance to coffee to digital music, people resist change, but they can get over this if the benefits are great enough. We have to innovate in order to provide a product, in this case, a sanitation solution with greater benefits than our existing toilets. I think our urine is key to innovating the toilet. You see, our urine only makes up 1% of the total wastewater coming from our homes. Yet it contains over 80% of the nitrogen, 70% of the potassium, and 50% of the phosphorus. Now these are three key nutrients needed to make any inorganic fertilizer, and we literally flush them away every day. So how can we use urine to innovate in the sanitation sector? We first need to understand the chemistry, and as a chemical engineer, that's exactly what I do. You see, we need to understand it to prevent the loss of nitrogen as ammonia gas. That is the typical smell you have when you let urine stand. We discovered that increasing the pH of fresh urine above 11 prevents this loss of nitrogen, something that had never been done before. We tried many combinations of chemicals and operating conditions to determine the ideal conditions and failed many times, but we kept on going trying to understand the fundamentals of what was actually happening in terms of the chemistry of the urine. Along the journey, we even found that the urine treatment process we discovered gave the urine a sweet smelling odor and later discovered that this was even attractive to female mosquitoes. Once we understood the chemistry, we needed a way to collect the urine, but a system that used no water mainly because we were in a period of a severe drought in Cape Town. And this is how the fertilizer producing urinal was born. It's so easy to operate. We increase the pH by adding a special chemical called calcium hydroxide. And we pre-dose the urinal with this powder and then simply add urine. So if I pee in the container, a small amount of the powder will dissolve. And if you pee in the container, a little more dissolves. Provided you have enough powder in the container, you maintain a high pH and you prevent the loss of any nitrogen. We also found that this new process kills pathogens, prevents bad smells, helps degrade pharmaceuticals and uses no drinking water to operate. It's really crazy how simple it is. Perhaps though the craziest thing that we did was grow a bio brick from urine. It took us many months and failed experiments, but in 2018, we grew the world's first bio brick. And when it went viral, a funny thing happened. Before, it would take four to six days to fill a 25 liter urinal container. Now, it takes typically six to eight hours to fill the same container. You see, people wanted to visit the new urinal and donate the urine because it became fun and people wanted to be involved in this work. We are now working on upgrading the urinal, growing stronger bio bricks and even recovering water and a liquid fertilizer using reverse osmosis. So the next time you take a pee, I want you to think about the liquid gold you are about to flush away and imagine instead a future where your urine is recycled, turned into fertilizer, water, and many other useful products. Think about how you can change the world one pee at a time.